If you are joining us for the first time, we are comparing the King James Version with modern version of the New Testament. And today, if you haven't watched the previous video, we invite you to go back to the previous video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we suggest you to click that button, subscribe, so you can have all the new latest update. So today, we will uh, take a look at three passages of the New Testament. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. And the Epistle to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 2. Okay, we're going to look, take a look at these three passages and compare uh, the King James Version with other modern version of the New Testament. Let's put them together and see what, first of all, let's look at the Gospel of, Matthew, of Mark, chapter 10. Verse 24 here, it says, and the disciple, I'm leading the ESV, were amazed at his word, but Jesus said unto them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. That's the translation of ESV, modern version. The NIV has about the same thing. Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. The NASV, also the same thing. But notice what the King James Version is saying. And the disciple were astonished at his word, but Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. These are two completely different uh, 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 passages. Okay, They cannot mean the same thing. All modern versions, most of these modern versions, are saying it's difficult for children to enter the kingdom of God. That's tragic. That's very tragic to tell children that it's difficult to enter the kingdom of God because it's very easy. Okay? It's very easy. Jesus Christ here, you must believe. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ in the finished work of Christ. It's those who put their trust in riches. It's for them that it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God. So we can say here the King James Version was translated in 1611, yet they have the accurate uh, passage which go back to the original writing. Okay, this is clear here and definitely this is a mistake and it has not been corrected up to now because it's based on the Alexandrian minority text, which are excluding this part of the passage and completely, completely missing the meaning and the context of this passage. Okay, so that's the first passage we wanted to look at. Let's take a look at the Gospel of Luke now. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, we have here chapter 4, verse 4. Okay. Let's see what the King James is saying versus the modern version of the Bible. So this is Jesus Christ being tempted in the desert while he was fasting. And Jesus answered Jesus answer him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Okay, that's what the ESV said. NASV said the same thing. NIV said the same thing. But let's read the King James version. It say, it is written. That man shall not live by bread alone. Then there is a second part, which is actually the important part, but by every word of God. And this is in reference to Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. So where it's coming from, it's not just man shall not live by bread alone. Man live by the word of God. A man of God. A Christian should live by the word of God. Meaning that should be it's spirit, his spiritual food. He should be nourished by the word of God, by meditating upon it day and night, like Joshua 1, 8 or, uh, or 9 that we all know. Okay, We are called as Christians to meditate upon God's word day and night. So it is very clear that the original writing did not miss this passage yet. Most modern versions are missing it because they're basing their translation on the minority text, the Alexandrian text, which has missed 
this important passage. Okay? Uh, so, because we are being transformed by the word of God. Okay? It's sharp and quick, quick and, and, and um, uh, sharper than any two-edged sword and is able to divide uh, between soul and spirit uh, and is a discerner of truth. Okay? The last passage we're going to take a look at is the second epistle of Paul to Timothy. Uh, let's see what that passage say in the King James versus these modern version, the NIV, ESV, and New American Standard Bible and the New uh, Revised Standard Bible. Okay, let me read the ESV. Verse 15 say, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Okay, if we read the NASV, it's about the same thing. NIV, about the same thing. But when we look at the King James, it, does, it doesn't say do your best or be diligent. Okay, it says study. Okay, and when it says study, it's in reference to the word of God. Because the second part is talking about rightly dividing the word of God. Okay, so when you see translation here, which say do your best. No, it's saying study, meditate God's word. Day and night. It's very important. We need to be on God's word. Day and night. Study it. Meditate upon it. Pray over it. So God can reveal the meaning to us. Not do your best. Uh, do whatever it takes. Study. Uh, be, delig be serious about it. Okay, so there is a difference. And again, the King James has it. The New King James has this translation. So again, this is um, an exercise just to compare uh, the King James with some modern version of the Bible. And to refute this argument that the age of a manuscript determine its accuracy, its closeness to the original writing. That is not totally true. Okay, it is an important factor, but that's not the only factor we need to take into account to assess the accuracy of a translation. Okay, we have shown in multiple examples that some manuscript, okay, which are dated around the oldest Greek manuscript that we have, which are Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus in particular. Yet, when we compare them with what the church fathers are using, we found difference. We found that the church fathers are favoring the majority type text, which is the Byzantine text. Even though many of those Greek manuscripts of the Byzantine type that are in existence are from a later date. And that's another question that we may, we're going to try to address in some other, the question to modern Scholars who are translating using Alexandrian texts, why do we have it in minority if it's the oldest? How did it come to be in the minority? I'm assuming in the first, in the second century, third century, it should have been the, the majority among Christians. Even though Christians were persecuted, we know that until Constantine came in the uh, fourth century, but Christians were clinging onto their scripture. You could take everything from them, but they would be because they cherished the word of God so dearly and they were ready to die for it. So we would expect those copies, somehow they will manage to keep them. How come uh, the minority text, the Alexandrian text is in the minority? We should have found a, a little bit more manuscript Okay, of the Alexandrian type, if they are uh, closer to the original, if they are more reliable. Because the Christian, the true Christians, the martyr, those who were killed. Okay, we, we mentioned St. Basil the Great, uh, uh, St. Hilary, uh, St. Augustine, um, 
uh, how do you call it again? Chrysostom, Saint Chrysostom, all these guys who live, and obviously Saint Irenaeus, and we'll come back to him uh, for some references um, that line up with the majority text. Saint Irenaeus is from the second century, uh, um, and uh, he was martyr, Polycarp, uh, and others. Okay. Uh, Justin Martyr, they were all living in the second century and many of them attest to the veracity of what the King James has translated and it's close to the original writing of the Apostle. We'll come back to those. Uh, we'll continue our exploration of this comparison. Stay tuned and thank you for your attention. May God bless you.